When I think back and I think about when I first heard about Water Gremlin, I think right from the get-go I thought there was something wrong. My name is Jennifer Merrily. I'm a reporter with WCCO-TV, and I've been reporting on Water Gremlin for nine months. White Bear Township business may have been emitting a cancer-causing chemical for more than a decade. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency sent out a notice that said there's going to be a community meeting talking about pollution in White Bear Township. Hi, Mary. Our station covered that. I didn't go to that meeting. Hi, Amelia. Well, the chemical that we're talking about is colorless and odorless. The first story I did about Water Gremlin was when the state Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, Minnesota Department of Health, announced a settlement. Water Gremlin paid a $7 million fine. While I was there and listening to this settlement, I had more questions than I was getting answers to. How could this pollution have happened for so long? Where was the oversight? How did someone not catch this? Why go forward with a settlement like this so quickly, soon after learning about the pollution problems? And we didn't really hear a great response, which is when I got involved. So this all started with a chemical called TCE. It's a toxic chemical that is known to cause cancer and birth defects, but the state has set safe levels to be emitted into the air. When the state found out that water gremlin had been exceeding those levels for more than 15 years, the state demanded that water gremlin stop using TCE. They then started using another chemical that water gremlin also had problems with controlling the emissions. And then the state shut down the coating process that was using this new chemical. When the MPCA ordered water gremlin to stop their coating process, I learned that water gremlin, under the noses of officials in Minnesota, had worked with a company across the state line in Wisconsin to pick up their coating operation. They were going to move their equipment that had not worked here in Minnesota to capture emissions properly, and we're going to move those across the state line to Wisconsin and start operating there. And I thought, let's see what that looks like. Just left Minnesota and crossed into Wisconsin. And I saw them unloading their equipment. Within 24 hours, that company decided not to work with Water Gremlin anymore. Going into Wisconsin was the first time we really uncovered something new and found out how Water Gremlin was operating. The legislative auditor will look at how the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency handled a pollution investigation. So the legislative auditor is an independent watchdog that can take a look at state agencies like the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency to find out if they did their job, if things could have been done better, and that is currently still happening right now. We had been requesting an interview with Governor Tim Walls about Water Gremlin. Um, it was September when he decided to sit down with us and the governor said, Well, first of all, it's unacceptable. We have these regulations in place. They have to be followed. And if you can get there, you can do business. I guess the question will be now is, have we gone so far down a road? Is the trust broken? And he wants a ban on the chemical Water Gremlin was originally using. What we didn't realize at the beginning was that lead was also an issue. We know Water Gremlin uses lead because they make lead products. Employees were unknowingly taking home lead from the facility and transferring it into their homes and then into their kids. Mom Amber Curry calls her daughter Janea a ball of energy. She was alarmed to learn a health provider found the three-year-old had a concerning level of lead in her blood. A week after we exposed that kids of Water Gremlin employees have been poisoned by take-home lead, the state temporarily shut down Water Gremlin. So this all went to court. The judge ultimately declared Water Gremlin a public health nuisance. It ended up being closed for a week, and then Water Gremlin was allowed to reopen, but with court oversight. Anything you'd like to say? I know we've been requesting an interview with you for, for months now. Water Gremlin has taken every effort necessary to be sure that families do not experience contamination in their home or lead blood levels in the future. Workers are incredibly frustrated. They're afraid of losing their job. 
They're afraid of not being able to provide for their families. Ones that I've talked to feel like they've done the right thing and that they're not the ones responsible for transferring lead home. But what we know has happened through court documents, through sources, is that there is lead dust kind of everywhere in the facility. And workers were taking lead home on their hair, on their shoes, on their cell phones, and getting into their cars and bringing it home. In the midst of Water Gremlin being in court over lead, MPCA comes back into the picture. Hazardous waste hadn't been disposed of, cleaned, kept properly on the site. So we're coming to the end of 2019 and we have three separate actions going on now. We have Water Gremlin that is still shut down on their coding process. We have Water Gremlin with major court oversight due to take home lead and kids being impacted. And we have a new administrative order dealing with hazardous waste. We didn't know what kind of impact there would come outside of you know state oversight from this story. But one big action came and that said Walmart dropped Water Gremlin. The giant retailer said, we're not gonna carry your products anymore. We're continuing to work on this story because we need to hold companies accountable. But the real motivation behind this is the community and um, the people that are impacted by this, whether it's the workers and their families or even greater Minnesota, who doesn't know if they have a water gremlin in their backyard. I was at this community meeting without a camera after work where I really just went to listen and find out what was going on. And there's a woman who I spoke to after the meeting who had drawn a map and it was a cul-de-sac. She had marked every home with X's that had been impacted by cancer. Could the actions of Water Gremlin have caused real health issues in people living in that community? We know people were exposed, and, and while I can't say that that exposure caused some kind of a health effect that they've maybe experienced, I can't automatically say it hasn't either. Multiple myeloma. Endometrial cancer. The PET scan lit up like a Christmas tree. Spend a long time convincing yourself that that's just the way the world is and it was fate and it was chance and it was bad luck and then to find out that someone's actions might have caused that. I think there's a lot that the state has learned from Water Gremlin and what's happened with it and that's that there are not enough inspectors to oversee all the companies that are using toxic chemicals in our state. We have a system of self-reporting. Water Gremlin was expected to self-report their emissions of a toxic chemical and inaccurately self-reported those emissions for more than 15 years. How can agencies better talk to each other? Our investigations have found that state agencies aren't communicating. I think it's been a wake-up call to the state. I think it's been a wake-up call for the community. And I'd either even um, say that's been a wake-up call for a water gremlin. I mean, look at what's happened in the last year. Um, I don't think anyone expected this, and there's more to come. <laughs>